by head coach Phil Neville, and we will get started with opening remarks. Afternoon, guys. Uh, we're back on the same time, which is nice. Uh, we obviously had a long travel day yesterday, so uh, there was no training yesterday. It was just maybe assessing where people are last night. Uh, today is really about recovery. Uh, we, we've, in terms of the squad, we we sent Leo Campano home yesterday. He's going to get scanned today, uh, so we'll have more updates on that. Uh, obviously, next week, uh, Coco won't be with us for this game either. Uh, and from from the game on Wednesday night, we've got two or three knocks and bruises that I hope will will be okay. But we're training at four o'clock today, so we'll we'll see how they are. Gonzalo, in particular, is very sore this morning in terms of his jaw and neck area. So we'll uh, he'll have a fitness test later on today, and and we'll assess. I think looking at looking at probably this game in isolation, Montreal rested six players in the night. From we think they're starting. 11 and because of their position in the table probably enabled them to take that risk and then they brought players on at the end to win them the game and we didn't have that luxury uh because our game went 97 minutes but what we did do we got we got six substitutions on and all sub six subs did fantastically well for us it kept them involved in the in in the spirit of the game <clears throat> and we're going to need all those players to be available tomorrow i think I think whether we freshen up at the start or during, it's going to be crucial. The timings of the subs and the, and, and the makeup of the starting lineup to make sure that we can, can compete on an energy wise. Uh, but apart from that, the, the, the squad's full of confidence. Uh, we were really pleased with them the other night. It was a, it was a really, really good performance. Uh, didn't probably reflect the chances we had in the game in terms of the scoreline. And and we we took a major step in terms of winning on the road. And tomorrow is an even bigger step because we're playing against a team that I think is one of the best in the conference. Uh, and we're going to have to be probably more ruthless and defend even better to get a result in this game. But the confidence that we're showing, the confidence and belief that the team have, means that we're going to the game really excited and uh, with the challenge that's ahead. We'll start with questions. First, Michelle Kaufman, then Mikey Pasquale. Hey, Phil, um, I just want to ask you, uh, Gonzalo, you know, if you had to put a percentage on it, you know, where, where do you think he is? Do you think he might be able to play? And if he and Leo both can't play, um, what do you do to compensate for that loss up top? Well, we've got, so I say he's 50-50. Uh, you, you asked for a percentage, 50%. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that works. Uh, and then, and then you're thinking about uh, replacements and, and, and depth behind that. You've got Ariel Lassiter, you've got Indiana Vasilev, and you've got Emerson Rodriguez. Plus, you've got Bryce Dukan, uh, Pozuelo, who can play in the false nine as well. So we, we have got lots of depth. Uh, we thought about maybe calling up Sean Hundal, but he, he's got a slight uh, ankle strain from the game last week. So we've got, we, we've got plenty of depth in forward positions when we brought, when we made the moves in the... Uh, in the last month, it was to give us depth in forward positions. And we're going to need that. We're going to need that. You know, my my thought is, is that Leo could be out for a period of time and that we're going to need Ari and Emerson and Indy to be able to be flexible and adaptable with their positions and where they're going to play. So, uh, so you know, so that, that there's our depth. What about Coco? What is it that happened to him? We never really talked about him. Coco, Coco last Monday, well, trained last Sunday and 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 just tightened up in his groin. Uh, he'd obviously had a big week training. He played, came on and, and impacted the game. He trained really hard on the Sunday. And then we, we recovered him on the Monday, but but he, he, he was really tight in his groin. So uh, we've scanned him. Uh, there is a slight bit of uh, tightness there, but we expect him to be back in training on... Uh, Monday or Tuesday, and to bring him on a trip like this where there's going to be no training, lots of travelling, it just seemed crazy with the, obviously, the amount of flying time we have, that it would have been, he probably might have been available for this game at a pinch, but we just, we, 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 we want to take the long haul with him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next question, Mike, then Andrea. Thank you, Rafa. Good afternoon, Phil. The, uh, the boys responded after your displeasure that was viewed with that tie with Cincinnati in the San Jose game. How do they keep this momentum going now, considering the window is starting to close on the games remaining to get that, at least that final playoff spot? Yeah, well, I think, I think that's going to be, uh, <clears throat> you look from maybe fourth or fifth down to uh, 12th, 
uh, it is like two, three points, it, 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 you know, and uh, you look at the league table sometimes, you know, you know, after maybe before Cincinnati, after Cincinnati, you think oh, we're, we're down in 11th, we're down in 11th, but feeling like we've got the feeling like we're a top five, six, seventh challenging team for the playoffs. Then you win a game and you, and you shoot all the way up to where we've shot up to now and looking at the league table, it makes you feel better. But you know that really, I think looking at the league table, my experience of probably in these situations means <clears throat> you've just got to concentrate one game at a time. From now to the end of the season, it's one game at a time. We can't look to the fact that, uh, you know, too far ahead. And, and you're looking at the fixtures. We play Columbus twice, we play Toronto twice, we play Chicago, and we play Montreal twice. So really, these are the fixtures that you're going to have to pick points up. P teams that you're competing against, plus Orlando, sorry, teams that you're competing against, you're going to have to take at least three to four points on them. Four points would probably affect the other team uh, massively. Three three points each would just do, would just cancel each other out. And then obviously not getting a victory against one of our rivals will damage your chances. So <clears throat> I think a team that can now go on a period of even two two consecutive wins or three consecutive wins would, would open up some kind of daylight between the rest of that chasing pack. And uh, I think from now to in the season, it's going to go right down to the very wire. If I could follow up, Phil, mentioning that some of your players could be out for Saturday against Montreal, and it could be a longer than that. How do you regroup? I mean, do you, do you feel that you have the boys that you can bring in there to, to try at least compensate for that? Yeah, well, well, that's why we invested in, in, in our team. That's why we brought Pozuelo and, and, uh, and Quarantine John in, is because we needed depth, you know, with, with Robbie Robinson missing for the whole season. We, uh, we, needed we needed strength and depth in forward areas. And, and now we have, you know, with everybody fit, we, we probably have too many, but we knew that we was going to pick up bumps and bruises. We knew that these road trips were going to be brutal. And, we knew, and, and so we've, the depth that we've added to the squad was to make sure that when, when we do suffer, we still got firepower, we could still score goals. And, and at this point of the season, the team, I think, that scores the most goals uh, and goals for it in terms of the quality of the attack will be the ones that are successful. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Frank. Next question on the line, Franco. I feel I wanted to make sure Gonzalo is not in the concussion protocol. He's not. He's not. Okay, and I wanted to ask you about Montreal. What have you seen about them? You were talking about the game they had on midweek. Obviously, they brought their attacking players and they won that game. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that attacking uh, trio that they have with Romel Kioto, Camara, and all of that? And how are they a danger for your team? Well, their 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 home form is similar to ours. I think they've they're really really strong at home. They've got a tight pitch. They press really aggressively. I think they've got a real fluid system where they have lots of interchanging of the positions, and uh, we're going to have to be really tactically astute. Uh, but it's it's you know I watched their game against New York City, who I think are the best team in the, in the conference. And they really, really give New York City a tough game a couple of weeks ago in, 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 in their place here. So uh, they've got fluidity, they've got pace and power. Uh, I think in Mihailovic is one of the players in the league. I think it's one of the most outstanding tens in the league. Uh, and, and they're a real threat. You know, they're a real threat from crosses. You look the other night in terms of, you know, they, they were losing 1-0. They came back to win 2-1. Two, 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 uh, they're a team that are going to be challenging for a playoff place without a shadow of a doubt. And... Uh, I thought we defended really well against uh, San Jose, but I do feel as if Montreal will cause or not cause have bigger threats and are a better team than San Jose. Last two questions, Franco and Ian. <clears throat> Thanks, Rafa. Hey, Phil, uh, you touched on the performances on, on Wednesday, but I wanted to ask you about just the overall system. You changed it up a little bit, um, went back to like the five-man backline. What did you think of what you saw from your team on, on Wednesday night? Well, yeah, we did change it up, uh, and and it was really it was really an attacking move to get all the the you know the most attacking players into the pitch. You know, with, with for large parts of the season, it's been Gonzalo or Leo, Gonzalo or Leo, and I spoke to them both probably after the weekend and said, "Look, guys, we're going to have to make sure we find a, a find a system to get you both in the team." 
And and for that, we said that you two have to make this work. You have, you know, like and, and the other night we asked things of Gonzalo and Leo that we probably wouldn't ask if they were just a one up there. Gonzalo dropping in onto their deep line midfield player, Leo probably chasing back a little bit more on the right hand side. And and you know, I give them the option, look, if you two want to play in the same team together and you want to start every game, you've got to make this work. And I thought there was a great attitude to that. Then, then you add Pozuelo in there as well, and you have to find a way for all three to be in the team. And and our wide players who we've invested a lot in as well in terms of Taylor, Lassiter, Emerson, uh, Vasilev. So it was finding a system that would would fit the personnel that we've got and and give us a lot of uh, solidity as well. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to have to be adaptable tomorrow in terms of our system, whether that's a four or a three because of the way that they play. But I think we've shown this season that within games and starts of games, we very rarely finish a game with the same system that we start and we're really flexible and adaptable because we've worked on both and the players feel comfortable in both systems. Last question here. Thanks, Rafa. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, deadline day and uh, New England, Charlotte, Cincinnati, Toronto went out, your playoff rivals went out and made moves. You decided to stay on Pat. Uh, just what you thought of some of the moves that your playoff rivals were making and, and why you decided to not uh, make a deal on 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 deadline day well we did make moves but we made ours earlier we made ours with quarantine and uh uh Pozuelo early you know and, and i think that that gave us the ability just to relax and and not make moves that we were rushed into panicked into i always think if you're making moves in the in, you know, in the last minutes of the deadline that maybe it's not really strategic maybe it's more a need uh maybe it's more of a need of desperation or or need uh, and maybe you don't get the player that you want. I've, I've got to say, seeing Christian McCoon go from Charlotte to, to New England, uh, he, he is, you know, he feels like he's still one of our boys to me. And, and, and that is a good move for the kid. He wants to play. Uh, did Shraddy go to New England? Uh, yeah, Shraddy went to New England. I saw Real Salt Lake made moves. Charlotte made moves. So, so they're making moves because they feel as if they have holes in their roster that need filling and we felt as if we we filled ours two three weeks before that and uh the thing with making moves particularly when you're bringing in international players is the visa process takes three to four weeks and that's why we made the moves early on on coco and on Pozuelo because we knew that it'd take three to four weeks to get the visa through and if you sign somebody now three to four weeks takes you to a point in the season where they might only be available for five games and we wanted them available for 10 to 11 so that so that was really good work I thought by uh, by everybody here thank you coach thanks guys